Hello and welcome to Church at Home with Rachel for Tuesday, the 13th of September. My name is Rachel Parker and I am the Anglican priest um, for the churches of St. Thomas Wainwright and St. Mary's in Edgerton in the Diocese of Edmonton, the Anglican Church of Canada in southeastern Alberta. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I welcome you to this little chat about the Queen and women in ministry and things like that. The other day I came across uh, um, of something on Facebook that I think we've, we've all seen lots of them. Um, there's been a lot of things since the Queen died that have um, in, invited us to remember her and invited us to think about her reign for 70 years, 96 years old, um, and working right up until the day she died. Uh, just an absolutely incredible role model and a symbol of womanhood in in much of its best um, example. There were aspects of the Queen's life that I imagine um, we would all say, well, what about this? She was one of the, the highlights or one of the things they were, they were talking about, about King Charles III's first speech in public on Friday um, was the fact that he was more emotional and that the Queen never showed emotion. And I think that comes very much from the world that she grew up in, the world that she was called to be um, the monarch for. And that while the world changed around her, she felt it was important that she be a standard, um, that she maintain the way things had been to a degree. Although she changed a lot as the world, as, the, as times changed as well. Um, but I got thinking, I read this, I'm going to read you something I saw on Facebook. Um, and it got me thinking about the queen and her role within the church and her role as a Christian. And this was posted originally by some, a man named, um, Josh Osborne. One of the chaplains of her majesty had been preaching on the second coming of the Lord. And afterward, in conversation with the chaplain, the queen exclaimed, Oh, how I wish that the Lord would come in my lifetime. Why, asked the chaplain, does your majesty feel this very earnest desire? The queen replied with quivering lips, and her whole countenance lighted up by deep emotion. I should so love to lay my crown at his feet. Wow. Now, she may have been speaking about the, the weight of the crown and all that was she was responsible for, what she held dear and what she held in, in her hands as the head of the Church of England and the defender of the faith. Um, a great weight, I would imagine, indeed. But from other things that she has said through the years, I think that her, her, she had a profound depth of faith, that her belief in Jesus Christ was real. And although she was the stiff, upper-lipped queen, the, the head of the church who did not blink, who did not waver, who did ne never exposed her own questionings and wonderings, I have to wonder if someone who was, you know, in, enjoyed living as a child with her father and playing with her sister and who loved her husband and and for all intents and purposes, seemed to love her children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren, how, how she must have wondered and struggled from time to time with what it meant to be the queen while being Elizabeth, the person, the wife, the mother, the child, the grandmother, great-grandmother, the friend, the faithful follower of Jesus Christ. And it occurred to me that within the 70 years of her reign, she, as the head of the church, the, the defender of the faith, was a woman in an era in which in England and around the world, in the United Kingdom and around the world, women in the Anglican church during her reign had to fight and put up with many, many, many difficult things to become ordained as priests in that church for which she was the head and to become bishops in that church. There are still pockets of the Anglican Communion where, where people don't agree that women should be ordained, that women are not, certainly not called to be bishops. Um, fewer and fewer, I think, as time goes by, but every once in a while, I still come across them. I, I remember when I was first in Halifax, 
um, or I was the rector of a church and went to a synod service and an elderly um, retired priest was, we were asked to administer the communion, the, the bread and the wine during the synod service um, at, at during the, the, the second day of synod. And I went up and I introduced myself and said I was from St. James, Halifax in Armdale. And uh, he said, oh, you must be the associate priest. I said, well, no, I'm the rector. I'm the new priest there. No, that can't be. You can't be the priest there. I said, well, indeed I am. Um, why? He said, because they would never hire a woman priest. Said, wow. Um, they did. And I think he was speaking more of his own personal thoughts than the congregation was. They had me for seven years and now they have another female priest. Um, but Queen Elizabeth, the, the monarch, the head of the church, governed a church that worked through in its own location in the United Kingdom, but then also around the world, worked through and continues to work through the role of women in the church. And this was a woman who, well, she was a woman. And I wonder how many times did her bishops, those ones who were so um, strongly opposed to women in ministry, had to sit with her or listen to her discuss things or stand over them as the head of the church, approve, for instance, the Archbishop of Canterbury when the options were provided to her, how many of them chafed at the bit to know that those decisions were being made by a woman? And I wonder, did it chafe her a bit at the bit, a, a little bit as well, for her to know that, because she was a thinking, questioning I think probably a very astute Christian woman, did she wonder herself? Did she ever have time and did she have place into which she could ask the questions that women ask, whether they agree that women should be in ministry or not? There are times when we have questions that men just don't because we think differently. And I wonder how many times did the queen, did Elizabeth, not as the queen, but Elizabeth as the woman, think to herself, this is ridiculous. I'm the head of the church. I could just declare that women can be ordained priests and bishops. Or did she wonder if women should have a role as a, as a bishop or as a priest? I, I somehow can't, can't reconcile in my head that maybe that, that she would be one of the supporters of no women in church, women in, in ministry, as she was probably the most, um, I don't know if powerful is the right word, 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 but the most influential woman in the world. As a matter of fact, at times I think she was probably the most influential person in the world for some groups of people, for some countries, for some places and peoples. It's, I wonder what it is to be in that position where you are both a woman and you are the one who is in charge, the one who is at the head. I also wonder how often she questioned things, how often she wondered whether her decisions were clear, whether they were the right ones or whether she would regret her decisions. I imagine, like any other person who is human, that she made decisions that she felt were best for her country, for her commonwealth, for her, her, for the, for her, her sovereign, the sovereign, the peoples that she served and wondered if that was the, if at times those decisions were not the best ones for the people that she loved the most. You see, being the queen, she was the queen before she was anything else. In a small, small way, I can understand, I can sort of relate a little bit because um, as a priest, I'm a priest 24-7. You never stop being a priest. The phone rings at three in the morning. The phone rings at three in the morning. You don't not answer it. Um, if you're driving down the road and we see an accident, my husband and I both have um, the desire to pull over and ask if there's a need of a priest, um, regardless of whether, you know, we're in our sweatshirts and jeans are wearing our collars and look like the priest that we are, there's a part of who we are that knows that at any time and in any moment we might be called to be 
the hands and feet of Christ, to be present to people. Um, when I remember when I worked in the bank, I could, you know, go home on Thursday or Friday night or Saturday after work and, you know, that was it. I didn't have to think about the bank again until I went back. I could do whatever I wanted, be whoever I wanted. I was only a teller, a customer service person, when I was in the doors of the bank. But as a priest, it's a whole different, whole different world. But as a queen, I cannot be a priest to my stepsons. I cannot be a priest to my family. But the queen is the queen of all of her people. Just as King Charles III is now the monarch for all of his people. His world changed completely. Not only as a person when his mother died, but also his role and who he is. And when he is consecrated, I believe that's the word that they use, when he has the coronation and he is, he is marked with holy oil, he will become king in a way that none of us can ever truly understand. Only the queen herself could have understood. But I do wonder, did she have troubles dealing with the men in the church who had trouble dealing with the idea of women in the church when, ironically, she was the head of the church? May we never, may we never underestimate the people who serve, whether we choose them or through such things as, as, as monarchical succession, they are chosen by birth. May we never underestimate the reality that they are first and foremost humans, and they also happen to serve. May God rest her soul, and may, and may King Charles III be given grace and peace and patience by his people that they might allow him to be human as well as to be their king. And may we who are Anglican, who are members of the Anglican Church worldwide, the Church of England, may we recognize and honor the role he has as the head of the church and the defender of the faith and recognize that he is still human and he is fallible and that we too must pray for him and his decisions as we prayed for the Queen. Have a great day. God bless you, and may you revel in your humanity. I'll see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel.